Hey guys, it's Aaron. Today we're going to take a look at an extension that's been around for a little while, but there's been some talk about it on our forum, so I figured we'd hop in and at least take a look. This is Shape Bender from Chris Fulmer. So let's go ahead and hop in. This is the Extension Warehouse page. It is available on Extension Warehouse. It is a free extension and it has been updated up to 2018, but I've verified it does work just fine in both 2019 and 2020 versions of SketchUp Pro. Once you install ShapeBender, you're gonna get a UI that looks like this, a single button. Keep it at simple, that's how I like it. Thank you, Chris Fulmer. All right, so what ShapeBender does is it takes a component, like this component right here, I have this, this is pretty simple. I mean, this is just, some geometry in here kind of looks like a multi-floored storefront or building front uh, in one big group. You can see it's just flat, just a single piece, real simple. It's gonna take this shape and bend it, bend the, the face that faces the red line like this, it's gonna bend that along a curve. So again, keeping it simple, I'm gonna need three pieces. One is a component to bend, that runs along the red, red axes right here. And if I look in my component, I can see the red axes matches the world axes. Perfect, runs this direction. I need a single line indicating the length of the component. So that's right here. I actually have, it's separate. It's not connected. It's actually a separate line. I just traced a line right under this front edge of this component. And then I need a curve to copy to. So I just made a real simple two arcs one arc here, one arc here. These don't have to be welded. Uh, it's not really, this is really pretty simple. Just a, a couple of, of curves of some type that you want to deform this geometry to. So how it works is extremely simple. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna select the component I want to bend. I'm gonna click on the shape bender icon. And now it comes up and asks me, the line that lies on the red axis that indicates the length of the component. You can see my cursor right now. I have a little straight line under it indicating that I need to select that line. So I'm gonna come over here and hover. All I can, the only thing I can select at this point is single line segments. So I'm gonna pick the one that is the length of my component, that's this one. Once I'm done with that, you can see I have an end and a start here. I can toggle what's the start point and what's the end point by hitting the down arrow key on the keyboard. That's gonna to toggle the start and end of my straight line. The next thing it's gonna ask is to select a curve. So again, if you look at the cursor, keeping it simple, the cursor has a little curvy line under it, indicating that I'm going to select my curve now. So if I come, come hover over any piece, remember this was two separate pieces when I started, but right now, as I hover over, it shows both pieces connected. So it you don't have to go in and solder or weld these back together. It's actually going to look for continuous lines and pick all of the connected pieces. So in this case, I have my double curve. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and then Shape Bender is gonna do its thing. So there it goes. It places that geometry over the curve and shows gives you a preview of what that's going to look like with that green line. So at this point, you have a couple options. See, I have this red. See, the blue is showing where the blue is, so that's that's actually underneath. That blue right there is tracing on that side, and the red is on the other side. So I have at this point the ability to toggle, to switch it from one side to the other, um, again, the down key toggles my initial line and the up key on the keyboard will toggle the placement of the curve geometry. So up key and down key are really my only keys I have to worry about. And that is of course, right down here at the bottom. If I do hit the up key, it flips it so that the blue side is on the other side. And there we go. That, that curve looks good. And the only other key I have to worry about is right here is accept. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and there we go looks pretty good pretty much exactly what i expected it to do so it does go through and it breaks that into two segments it pushes that around there are occasions just to give you a heads up there are occasions where shape bender will over smooth my geometry everything looks pretty good in this one but sometimes i'll end up with edges that should not be smooth end up getting smoothed 
which is not too big of a deal to straighten out because you can just double click, triple click, and then use my soft and smooth uh, window to clean that up if it over smooths. And then you get those weird shadows, you know what I'm talking about. But this looks like it worked pretty well. Okay, so since the initial release of ShapeBender, this is an older extension, other tools have come along that allow you to deform geometry in a similar way. The two specifically that I can think of off the top of my head that are dedicated to this are TomTom's TrueBend and Flowify. Both of those work awesome too. So where does that put ShapeBender, and like I said, an older extension with those, those newer options? I still think there's a place for it. I think that all three of them are very valid to have. We've, we've done an extension inspection on TrueBend. TrueBend is real nice, but it's very simple. It lets you take geometry and curve it on one axis uh, around an arc from you know one degree all the way to 360 degrees, and that's it. So to do something like we just did would actually mean splitting the initial geometry in half, bending half of it one way, half of it the other way, then connecting them together, and then cleaning up the intersection. So it would not be quick and easy. It would, it would actually take a little bit of extra work with true bend. Flowify has definitely has some cool stuff. With Flowify, you're not just bending on one axis, you can actually match a three-dimensional grid. Great extension, but not as single-click easy setup as what ShapeBender does. So with ShapeBender, just click, 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 and then it's done. Flowify, very cool extension, but it does require a little more setup with uh, having lines, map corners of target geometry, to the grid geometry, and it's a little bit more work, so not quite as simple, but it really does what it does good. So what I would say is ShapeBender kind of falls in the middle of those two as far as capability and functionality, but still a great tool and something you should have in your toolbox if you've ever had any situation where you have to deform geometry. So take a look, ShapeBender from Chris Fulmer is available on the Extension Warehouse. We'll link down below and we'll link to those other two that I talked about, both TrueBend and Flowify as well. Great extensions all, but an essential tool if you have any need to deform straight geometry to follow curves. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you don't already, please click subscribe. We're putting together more and more videos to release on a regular basis, and you'll be notified if you have that subscribe button checked. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Uh, like I said, this extension was reviewed based on comments from our users. We like making these videos a lot, but we like making them a lot more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.